Mr. and Mrs. Bob Lavasser. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Jill Staling. <laughs> There's a couple of reasons for these special thanks. First, without them, financially, this wedding wouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but second, and more importantly, without that burning in their loins 30 years ago for each other, <laughs> Ryan and Sue would not be here. <laughs> As many of you know, uh, the best man is a time honored tradition. <laughs> Typically, the best man would ensure that the next two to five minutes of the groom's life would be among the most embarrassing <laughs> I, however, do not need to do that this evening. Because tonight, Brian's two to five minutes will inevitably come <laughs> with his first romantic encounter with his <laughs> racing, coming up with tons of ideas to try and share with all of you. Um, I really wanted this speech to be perfect for Brian and Sue. Amongst these sleepless nights in my quest for perfection, I came up with two apparent facts. Number one, I don't know half as much as I would like to think that I know. And number two, nobody is perfect. My mother Sandra's pretty damn close though. <laughs> <laughs> However, you can have perfect moments with the people you love, which then become perfect memories. For example, it's 1990, I'm about 13 years old, Brian's 11. <laughs> We concocted this plan to have our two younger sisters, <laughs> two younger sisters simultaneously say I love you dad while giving him the bird <laughs> when he came home from work. <laughs> the look on dad's face was priceless. <laughs> we had successfully brainwashed his two little angels. <laughs> was a perfect moment. <laughs> As my younger brother, Brian always followed me around. He was curious about what I was doing, what I was wearing, what I was thinking. He would always ask me questions about anything. Uh, they had no rhyme or reason to them. He would stare at me anxiously, awaiting my response, as if I was some messiah or something. <laughs> 
It never occurred to me how much I meant to him until this one day in 2000. Okay. <laughs> I, go on. I received this letter from him. Brian was serving in the United States Marine Corps. Iraq. <laughs> he was off the coast of some foreign country waiting to be called into action. The letter stated how proud he was to be my brother and how he always looked up to me. <laughs> he said that he hoped that he could become the man that I had become. At that moment in time, we had pretty much a complete role reversal. Here he is, this 20-year-old kid overseas fighting in a war, and he's telling me how much I mean to him. I mean, I needed to be more like him at that moment in time. Brian, you have unmatched work ethic and an even bigger heart, and I feel so lucky to have been part of your life. And now for my new sister, Susie Q. <laughs> I've known her now for about six and a half years. I'll be honest, Sue. Ryan and our whole family wondering what was going on. What the heck is taking so long? <laughs> I couldn't pinpoint a reason. You're beautiful, smart, funny. Just great to hang out with, Sue. You can't get a better combination of traits in a woman anywhere. So what gives? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> And then, about a week ago, I'm up at midnight because I can't sleep about this speech. <laughs> and it hits me. Sue is a New York Jets fan. <laughs> I think Brian, you know, hung around this long in hopes that she would change her allegiance to a different team. Sue, so, I promise to love you and, cheat, and treat you with respect for 363 days out of the year. <laughs> the only two exceptions are when the Patriots and Jets meet. <laughs> <laughs> in which I am sure we will engage in some verbal altercation. <laughs> I need everybody in the room right now to repeat after me, okay? This is one thing for Sue, she's never, ever going to hear out of my mouth again. All right? You got it? Everybody after me. Okay. J! J! E! T! E! S! J! S! J! and may you have many perfect moments. We love you. We love you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.